frightening trend. More than 1,000 children have been reported missing. Every move you make. You know, in human trafficking, that's, that's actually pretty high. Over 1,000 people is missing inside of Ohio and it's not found this year. But that's not the highest state. It's California with over 2,000 people. Now there's a very, very scary case we gotta get into. These kids inside of a house go missing. It's very creepy. This case is one of the most mind-bending cases I have ever read about. But before we get into that, there is just one, one little fact that I gotta get into. If someone goes missing, what happens first? If it's a kidnap, what happens first? More than likely, you will be getting stalked first. This girl named Candace Tucker made a video and she seen this car driving past her house six times. Two nights ago, this car drove by my house six times in the matter of like a two hour span. And they are going to be back in front of my house and this time they are going to stop. Now I want you to notice, well we all notice, this is a car obviously stalking this house. Maybe trying to figure out their routine around this time at night time. Is anyone home at this house at night time? Are the parents at work? Do they have teens in this house that's alone? Or maybe kids in this house that's alone? It's a lot of things that stalkers like to do to fill in the notes in their head so that they can remember before they go with a sick plan. Step, you say vary your routine. Mm -hmm. Give me a good example. You know, break up your routine during the day. Maybe change the way that you go to work. Change the time that you go to work, go to school. It makes it harder for the stalker to have access to you and that little act can actually increase your safety. Luckily for her, that car never came back and she ended up being safe. Well, that brings us to this case of this family inside of a house. We have to get into it because, wow. Christmas Eve, Jenny and her family getting the Christmas trees ready, packing up presents for Christmas Day, then join a night, right? Right. And then the phone rang. Jenny, the mother, at first she was thinking, oh, this is my son. He's in the military, so he's calling to wish us a Merry Christmas. So she answers the phone, and it's not her son. It's a woman that she has no clue of, that she don't know. And this woman asked her for a person that she wanted to speak to that Jenny does not know. But Jenny, she just shook it off because she thought that this was a mistake because she heard laughing in the background, music, so she thought, oh, they had a party drinking and she made a mistake and called the wrong number. Then time passed. It's the middle of the night. She goes in the living room and she sees that the lights are still on. She sees that the curtains is wide open and the front door is unlocked. One of the kids named Marin, she would sleep on that couch. She would sleep on the couch and she automatically figured that, okay, the other kids must be sleep upstairs. So she locks her door, she closes the windows, she turns off the lights, she goes upstairs, she goes in her room, gets comfortable, and she goes to sleep. More time passed in the middle of the night and she heard this loud bang. Before we start this horrific video, you already know what I'm about to say. Tell them. Go get your snacks. Shout out to you for having your snacks. I appreciate you so much. So with that being said, go get your snacks. Uh, I just started off in your world. This loud bang came from their roof and something hitting the floor. And she just goes right back to sleep, but she didn't know how strange that is. But you know, it was in the middle of the night. She was, she was just woken up. She didn't really register it yet. But then 30 minutes go by and she wakes up and next to her her husband wakes up which is george and he sees smoke and his smoke was fire smoke filling up the whole entire house so immediately they run to get their two-year-old and they go outside to see three kids their three kids george jr marin and john was already outside but a lot of their kids was missing a six-year-old named dolly eight-year-old jenny 10-year-old lewis 12 year old martha 14 year old maurice is not outside yet so immediately they thought our kids they're in the fire this is a lot of kids like this is a big family they could be going through the worst right now they could be trying to get out they could probably be sleeping don't really know and they could probably suffocate in their sleep because of the smoke it's a lot of things that you just think about that could be going on inside of that house with those kids but this case is not as it seems because everything is not 
Imagine losing five of your kids in a house fire, only to later realize that the fire was a ruse to kidnap them. This is one of the most mysterious disappearances in history. The dad, he goes inside the house, he's looking for his kids. The stairs, completely covered with a lot of fire. But then he remembered there is a ladder on inside of the house that I can climb up to get to the second floor, but that ladder was not there. It was not where he last seen it, meaning it was moved. Then they decided to get in both of the trucks, but both of their cars did not start even though they was working perfectly fine before all of this ever happened. Now you got some of the kids, it's only three of them, which is only really one of them, goes to the neighbors trying to get the neighbors to get in touch with the fire department so they can come. Six long hours done passed, then the fire department came. Now you can only imagine what the family is feeling right now. Our kids, they in a fire, they're done by now. You know, it's no way they live that, of course. You in the fire that long, you're not living that. So this family is sad. Now, even though it took the fire department six hours for them to come, the house only been burning for an hour. And they said, while investigating this house, it's no way possible that the bodies would be completely decayed into ashes because the fire was not hot enough for that to happen. Their remains supposed to be found in this fire, but no remains was found. Not only that, them investigating, they knew that electrical wires was cut, but the family didn't know who cut it. It was cut before the fire happened. Even though no remains was found from five kids that was apparently in that fire, they ruled them out as dying in a house fire. But as time went on, the family knew five kids, our five kids, they was not in that fire when it happened. They was kidnapped. He said if I screamed, he'd kill me. No signs of forced entry. Doors and windows were locked. No DNA. Not a single neighbor saw or heard a thing. This is where it gets me because y'all don't know how creepy this is to me. This is a big family. Majority of us only live with about four to five people in a house. This is a huge family. Like how was somebody able to come in your house and take five? But now it's starting to make sense to you. I she heard that big thud from the roof and it hitting the floor. It was because the roof caved in and it fell from the fire. And then it makes you think, the curtains was wide open, the front door was opened, maybe when the mother was inside of the house, the living room alone, while everybody was asleep, creepy people who took those five kids was probably in the dark corners in the house hiding, looking right at her. She had no idea, just waiting for her to go to sleep. <laughs> And y'all know I'm not lying because y'all know if you watch my channel long enough that there was a man walking in his house at night because he heard something and there was a hooded man hiding in the corner just staring at him. He was just an intruder though, but it's just so creepy that a man was staring in the corner at him and he had no idea until he posted the video. <laughs> what this family decides to do is put up a billboard for their missing kids and say, if you find these kids or you have information about their whereabouts, you'll be rewarded with $5,000. Because the family just knew that their kids was kidnapped. The mother, she decided to go full investigation mode. She got animal bones. I don't know how she got the bones. I'm not saying she murdered animals, got their bones, but she got animal bones some way, somehow, and she will burn these bones. No matter how hot the fire got, these bones were still attached and it didn't remain into ashes. And it's even been studies that fires up to 2000 degrees last. The bones will last a little bit over two hours and not be detached at all. It will still remain attached. And that's 2000 degrees for over two hours. Remember the house was burnt just for one hour. So with this information, why can't you not find any bones in that house? But there's just some strange that y'all need to know that occurred before this whole thing ever started. Before, half of their family went missing and before, half of their family still remained together. And you know that, that girl, Mary? Remember she was laying on the couch alone by herself in the living room, but nothing ever happened to her? I'm just surprised that she didn't get took. About 75% know their stalker. But let's get into the strange event because oof. As this family enjoying their day, they get a knock on their door. Random day, this is before everything ever happened. The fire, everything. Remember that. And this this random worker, he said, come see y'all. I want y'all to come see. This worker pointed to a fuse box and said, see that right there? This will start a fire someday. This is weird for obvious reasons, but not only that, their whole electrical system was just given a clean, fresh new build. So it didn't make sense on why this random strange worker would say something like this. 
One third say they were followed or spied on. Strange number two happens then. A salesman, I guess he wanted to buy this house or something like that, or sell something to the family. And he said no. The father, George, said no to everything that this salesman was offering to the dad. And he warned him, basically threatened him. He was like, your house will hold bit burn into flames. And 21% say they've been attacked. This house will burn someday with your kids. Now, that's already two men saying some weird shit. Let's get into strange number three. And I'ma just say, the family, the dad, he shrugged that off. And they act like, oh, it was just a threat. And they went on about their days. Ah, <sighs> now, this was when everything adds up in a way. Remember, I brought up a lot of missing people in the beginning of this video. More than 1,000 children have been reported missing. Because this case deals with missing kids. Well, strange number three happens. The son, Maurice, sees a car parked right down from their house on side of the road. Inside of the car, he see the man looking at his siblings walk home from school. The younger kids that's gone, that disappeared, he see them walking home from school and he just staring at them, looking at them. His eyes is following them. And Maurice is just like, what is going on? And Maurice also seen a grenade around his car. And that makes you wonder, does this grenade have something to do with that dud on the roof starting the fire? Then we moving on to the strange events that happened after the kids went missing. A woman, she said, oh, I seen your kids, by the way, in a car. And they was looking out, almost waving like this as the car was just passing by. Strange number two, after the kids disappeared, another woman at this diner, she said, oh, matter of fact, I serve your kids breakfast. They came into my restaurant and I served them breakfast. What? Workers at this hotel said, I seen two men with all of the kids at this hotel. And mind you, there was a lot of anonymous tips sent in by the police saying that they heard and seen some strange things dealing with the kids. Like, numerous. But still, this family would come up empty-handed. This case happened in the 1960s, still to this day, 2023. Gone. Meaning, the parents, George and Jenny, died without knowing what happened to their kids. Crazy world. Isn't it weird that five people could go missing inside of their own home in Marin? Being she being on the couch that night by herself and she didn't get took, she got lucky. There's a secret that I do want to tell y'all and my family, they find it very strange when I do this every night. Most of y'all, we all sleep with our room door closed, but I sleep with mine closed and locked. Meaning every time they twist my door, they have to knock on my door because I always have it locked. And they don't know why I do this because I never told them. They never questioned it really, but they did see that it's weird that I do that. It's really because, so I have this weird, this weird thing about somebody looking over me in my sleep and doing something to me. Like, I'm being so serious. But I, the crazy thing is, I'm not scared of the dark. I can be home alone and have all the lights off, which I always do. It's just... When I'm asleep, I feel very vulnerable and I don't want nobody looking over me. Or if the bathroom door unlocked and I'm taking a shower and I feel like somebody's on the other side of the curtain. I don't know when I'm washing my hair. I feel like that'll be the worst time as well. I think about, <laughs> I think about stuff like that. I'm serious. I'm serious.